I am Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Today's topic is logic, mathematical logic. Um, numbers, sets, equations, geometrical figures. There are many subjects mathematicians are talking about. But logic is the language which they're talking. This is how they're explaining their theories one to another, or publish it in the magazine. Um, what is mathematical logic? Let's just examine certain concepts. Um, it's, like, it's just like learning another language, basically. So, the first concept which um, logic actually introduces to mathematics is the concept of true or false. Um, we are saying that certain statements are true or false. That's basically the purpose of any scientific research. They take something and they prove that this is true, or something that, which is actually false, doesn't really matter. So, these two words are extremely important in this mathematical language which we call logic. Um, actually, the purpose of any mathematical research is to prove that certain statement is true. Then somebody else takes this statement, which has already been proven as true, and derives some other statement a little bit more complex. Derives using certain logical principles of derivation. Um, we will talk about this principle a little later. But what's important is that from a true statement, using a logical derivation mechanism, we can come to another statement which by this derivation is proven to be true. And that's how the whole building is built. A couple of statements, then somebody else takes them, comes to a conclusion using logical derivation to some other statements, etc., etc., etc. So that's how the whole building of mathematics is built. All right, we understand how it grows, but let's go down to the roots of this. How do I know that certain statement is true? Well, as I was explaining, most likely I derived this statement from previous statement which has already been proven true. But how that statement was proven to be true? Well, there was something even more elementary. All right, etc., etc. We don't want this process to be infinite. Uh, well, because if I, want, if I want to explain that this statement is true, I have to basically explain how it's derived. But if this process is infinite, there is no way I can uh, finish my explanation in a finite number, n number of hours. So, logically, we are coming to a certain conclusion that this derivation, if we go backwards, cannot really go indefinitely. It should stop somewhere, and there are certain statements which we really cannot prove. Well, you can say that, well, there are certain statements which are so obvious we don't have to prove them. Well, not so fast. There is nothing obvious in this world, especially in mathematics. So, let's just define it slightly differently. There are certain statements which we, unfortunately, have to accept for granted as a true statement, just because we don't know how to prove them. There is nothing more elementary which we already know is true to derive from. So these statements, which we unfortunately, unwillingly, kicking and screaming, have to accept as true statements, um, and then having this as a foundation of our theory, we can start building and derive um, other statements from them. So these first statements which we accept for granted as, as true statements are called axioms. Now, having these axioms, maybe it's one, maybe it's ten, maybe it's, I don't know, thousand, doesn't matter. Having these statements in the foundation of our theory we can use logical derivation mechanism to come up with some other statements, much more complex, etc. 
So the geometry, for instance, was built on certain statements. Um, the first person who really tried to put it in order was um, Greek uh, mathematician Euclidus, and um, he had certain number of postulates, as he said. But by the way, axiom and postulate is uh, uh, synonyms. Um, you can use them inter interchangeably. So he called them postulates, and um, he basically derived the whole geometry, well, he started at least, to derive the whole geometry from these five initial postulates. Uh, it was the first of, a, a, attempt, um, very successful, by the way. I mean, it's not like 100% mathematically correct, but there are very, very important, significant um, um, successes built on this. All right, so we have a certain number of axioms which we unfortunately, unwillingly accept as, as true statements. And then we use logical derivation to to prove other statements, which we call theorems. Well, obviously, the number of axioms is usually very small, very limited. Like in case of Euclidus, he just came up with five um, axioms. And the uh, uh, number of theorems is extremely um, uh, much more greater. It's uh, extremely large. And uh, obviously, everybody who is involved in mathematics, all they know is they're proving theorems, one after another after another. All right, so basically the first statements are axioms, the next uh, generation up are, are, are theorems, and we are using logical derivation. Now, there is um, a, a term which mathematicians are using um, about uh, the, the logical derivation. It's called implication. Implication means basically uh, that um, one particular statement is used uh, to derive the other statement. So we are saying that the first statement implies the second, or this is the process of implication from the first statement to the second. All right, so these are just terms which we are using. And um, let's try to do something with uh, these true and false statements. Um, there is an interesting concept of a function in mathematics. Function is something which you, you take something like an argument, you do something, and you derive with some kind of a value, which is the value of this function based on this particular argument. What's interesting is you can consider a set of all statements in the world, whatever anybody can say about anything, and use these uh, individual statements as arguments and the function which we actually take from it is um, the function which takes only two values, true or false. So for any statement, we derive with the function value, which is true or false. So you can say that uh, logic is dealing with function which takes only two values, true, true or false, on the set of all the different statements. Actually. It's not for every statement which this function is defined. There are certain statements which we cannot say whether it's true or false. But let's not consider them right now, maybe later. Um, right now we are considering only the statements which we can say about um, those statements, whether it's true or false. Okay, so let's say we have a statement S. And let's say our function takes the value of true on this statement. For instance, I'm standing here and talking right now. This is obviously a true statement. And uh, so what can we do with, uh, uh, with this function? Well, first of all, if function is defined on the statement S, we can always define statement which is a negation of S. It's basically an applying of the word not. I am not standing here and talking to you. Well. If I am standing and talking is true, then the negation is a false. This is just one of the rules of logic. If something is true, its negation is false. That's how true and false are inter interconnected. Okay, so we can apply one particular operation, if you wish. It's an operation on a set of statements. From one statement, we take an operation and take another statement. And by the way, there is a great analogy 
If you have a number 5, you can multiply it by minus 1 and get minus 5, which is negative 5. So operation of negation in, in, in logic is very much like multiplication by minus 1 in, uh, in arithmetic. Great, fine, let's continue. What other operations we can do? With numbers, for instance, we can do addition or multiplication. Well, what's interesting is we have a very good analogy here in logic. What is addition in numbers? We have two numbers, and we get the third one, and we know its value based on the values of these two. Same thing with logic. If you have two different statements, S and T, and whatever their value is, let's say it's true and false, um, you can always come up with another statement which can be symbolically represented as S or T. I'm using the vertical bar as or. So this is a negation. And this is logical or. These are operations. This is operation on one statement. This is operation on two statements. Well, what's the value of a new statement which is a result of the logical or between S and T. Well, let's think about it. Um, first of all, let's talk about a concrete example. Um, one statement which we have already um, spoken about is, I'm standing here and talking to you. Another statement. Um, let's say the camera uh, is taking my video. Both are true statements. If I'm connecting them with the word or, I'm either standing here or the camera is taking um, the video. Well, obviously, if I'm standing and the camera is taking video, then connecting by or will result in another statement which is also true. So let's just try to build a table, actually, of all the different values the operation or can present. So, we are talking about operation OR. If our arguments are both true, the operation OR applied to them will also result in a true statement, correct? If I'm standing, either I'm standing here or the camera is taking picture. Both are true, <clears throat> so the or is actually true as well. Now, let's consider true and false connected with operation or. I'm either standing here or right now is uh, 2 o'clock in the morning. And by the way, right now it's about 10 o'clock in New York. So, uh, Obviously, the first statement is true. I'm standing here and talking. And another statement is false, that right now is 2 o'clock in the morning in New York. Well, if I'm connecting them with an operator or, either I'm standing here or this is 2 o'clock in the morning, then since it's or and one of them is already a true statement, obviously that the result will be a true statement. So the result of true or false is also true. Well, similarly, false and true will also be true. And finally, if both statements are false, like I'm not standing here right now, and the camera is not really taking my picture, um, now, if I connect them with, uh, with operator or, either I'm not standing here, or the camera is not taking picture, neither of these is true, both are false, so the result will be false. So this is our multiplication table, if you wish. Remember, we all had something like a multiplication table in school, like 25 times 3, 75, 5 times 7, 35, etc. So, true or true is true. 
false or false is false. So basically, this is our equivalent of a logical multiplication table. All right, so we have come up with this operator or any other operators? Yes. Another operator is, I'm sure many of you have already figured out that there is an operator AND in logic. I will use ampersand to signify. All right, now this is AND. AND from the logical standpoint means that actually we are combining together both statements. Well, it's quite obvious that if you combine true and true, you will get a true statement. I'm standing here, and right now is 10 o'clock in New York, which is true, then obviously this is a, a correct statement, this is a true statement. Now, obviously if you combine false together, I'm not standing here, and it's not 10 o'clock, in New York, then obviously you will get false statement. Maybe a little bit more complicated are the combination of true and false. Well, let's just consider. Um, I am standing here, and right now is 2 o'clock in the morning in New York, and 2 o'clock in the morning. Because it's and, it means that both have to be actually true. And right now we have only one of them, so the result is false. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so we have introduced certain operations or operators um, in the set of all the different statements, and these uh, operators help us to uh, uh, basically um, take two different statements and come up with the result of this operator, and we know what will be the, uh, the value of the truthfulness for that um, other statement. That's very good. That's what logic actually is using to derive the theorems. They have one particular statement, which is true, and then another statement. They combine them together, and they say, okay, this is true and this is true. Therefore, this must be our result. The end operator of these two statements should also be true. This is the process of derivation. <coughs> okay, fine. So we finished that. We introduced our axioms and theorems and operators among statements. All right, so next thing is, um, let's talk a little bit about implication and use some symbolics to, um, to basically write it down. Um, let's just consider some example of implication. Um, let's say I'm a man um, and uh, all men are living beings. Um, so basically, I am a living being. So the first is, I am a man. Then all men are living beings. Spell. Okay, so this is statement X. This is statement Y. Obviously, the new statement is, is basically the result of derivation uh, from, from these statements. New statement is I am a living being. This is the statement Z. Obviously, statement Z is derived from X and Y, right? So, how can it be described symbolically? Well, very simply. I'm a man, and all men are living being. Let's start with this. And... This is the logical end. I am a man, and all men are living being. It implies that I am a living being. 
implies I will use this type of kind of error as an implication sign. And that's basically a description of the fact that I am a living being is derived from logical ending between I am um, a man and all men are being. So this is the logical formula, <coughs> which basically represents a theorem, if you wish. That's, that, that's the language. That's how people are um, describing what, he, uh, what exactly they mean um, in, in mathematical logic. So, let's talk about this, this operator, if you wish, or a relationship, which we call implication. There are actually many different variations of this, and uh, I will consider four most important ones. Let's have this derivation. If I prove it, it means I have proved a theory. Whatever logical statements A and B are, if I prove this derivation, if I prove that A implies B, it means I have proven some theorem. Now, together with this kind of a theorem, there are some other theorems. Let's consider the following. Can it be proven from A? we derive B, but from B we can derive A as well. This, by the way, is called converse. This is a converse theorem to this one. Well, are there statements which are basically arranged like this? Yes, absolutely. They are equivalent statements. Um, for instance, in geometry, um, you can say that, um, for instance, there are there is a geometrical figure which consists of points and segments, and they are connected in, in, uh, to each other. And there are only three points. And then there is another statement that there is a particular figure which contains the same thing, but it has three sides. Well, three points or three sides. That seems to be kind of equivalent, right? And basically from one, we can derive another. If there are three points and they are connect uh, consecutively connected, then there are three sides and vice versa in the loop, I mean. So there are basically equivalent statements. And from one, we can derive another. From, from, from another, we can derive the other one. But that's not necessarily true. There are some statements um, which you can prove the direct theorem but the converse theorem is just definitely not uh, not correct. Um, example: um, All men are living beings. Uh, the converse statement: All living beings are men. That's definitely incorrect. You have flowers, you have butterflies, or whatever. They're not man, and uh, therefore the converse statement is not really true. Okay, another example is and that's called inverse. Um, I am not a man, therefore I'm not a living being. Well, is it right? No, this is, this is not correct. Again, flowers, butterflies, they're not men, but they are living being. So you cannot derive the, uh, the statement that um, this is not a living being. You cannot derive it from a statement, this is not a man. Because there are definitely other non-men but living beings. So again, if this is correct, the direct theorem is correct, the inverse theorem is not necessarily correct. And then the, third, uh, the fourth uh, variation is this. It's called, there's a very long word, contra-positive. 
So this theorem, which says, in our example, if this is not a living being, it's not a man. Well, this seems to be a correct statement. So basically what I'm saying is that this statement and this statement are basically related that if this is true, this is true as well. And by the way, these statements are also related in exactly the same fashion. And we can prove that. All right, so we have introduced, together with the direct theorem, a converse theorem, when we basically reverse the places of from and to. Um, inverse, when, when we are using negation on both sides. Um, and and contrapositive, when we do both. We reverse the uh, direction of derivation, and we use the negation. Um, and the last but not least, I would like to talk about connection between um, logic and uh, set theory. In the set theory, you, if, if you remember, we were using something like unions and uh, intersections between, um, between the different uh, sets. Well, let me just say that there is a direct analogy between logical logical operation or, which is bar, and um, union in the set operation between logical and and intersection. And intersect. And between logical negation and um, complement. When you're complementing uh, one object, one particular set, to a bigger set. OK, um, let's consider each one of these in succession. So I will basically go into the details and explain why. All right, and and uh, intersection. Intersection, if you remember, between two sets is this. Well. If I am telling that a point belongs to a set A, and then I'm saying that the point belongs to the set B, what is intersection? It's a statement which says the point belongs to the set A and, logical and, the point belongs to the set B. Similarly, what is a union? Union is the combination of this. Obviously, from the logical standpoint, a statement, a point, an element belongs to the A, or the element belongs to the B. This is logical or is equivalent to the union. And finally, negation, if you have a bigger set and a smaller set. So this is A. And this is some kind of a big set, which we can use Z, let's say, which includes A. If I'm saying a, an element does not belong to A, it means it belongs to everything around. And that's what complement actually is. So this is an exact correlation, exact, exact connection between these two uh, theories. And finally, just to make a little bit, um, maybe to introduce some fun in, 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 in this dry mathematical lecture, let me just tell you that uh, if you remember in the beginning I told that not every statement can be 
qualified as true or false. And uh, it means that this function, logical function, which has values true or false, um, is not really defined on any statement whatsoever. <coughs> there are statements, <coughs> excuse me, there are statements for which we cannot really say whether they're true or false. Um, let me give you an example. Um, what I am saying now is false. So whatever I am saying right now is false. Think about this statement. It cannot be true because the statement says that I'm telling, that I'm telling false, so it cannot be true. But it cannot be false because it means that the opposite statement will be true. Think about this yourself, and uh, basically you'll come up to, to this conclusion that uh, we cannot really say anything <clears throat> about this particular statement, whether it's true or false. Well, that's it for today. That's it for mathematical logic. Thank you very much.